This program was made possible in part. Hey everybody, the chicks are here. Baby chicks are one day old when they come to the farm. The houses are clean, stocked with plenty of fresh food and water, and just the right temperature. Our birds are kept inside to protect them and prevent diseases. We work hard to make sure that these chicks grow up healthy. Healthy animals ensure a healthy food source for your family. We're proud to be Mississippi farmers feeding Mississippi and the world. The Farm Families of Mississippi. Mississippi Seafood Marketing, a division of the Department of Marine Resources. From our waters to your table. Fresh, local, healthy. Information available at dmr.ms.gov. Hi, I'm Chef Rob Stinson, and this is Fit to Eat a new series about eating healthy and living better. I love tuna because it's a great source of omega-3 fatty acids which help lower blood pressure and cholesterol. There's a huge difference between canned tuna and fresh seared tuna. Today, we're gonna use my easy healthy smoking technique on the stovetop and give the tuna a great flavor and then by making a teriyaki glaze from scratch, we're gonna save over 690 milligrams of sodium. As always, you can find all of our recipes with the nutritional information on our website, mpbonline.org slash fit to eat. Now tuna, if you're down on the Gulf Coast, is everywhere. So this is a great local seafood to Mississippi. And one of the things that I really love about tuna is as I have matured, I've learned you don't want to overcook it. So tuna now is a dish where most people will sear it and keep it rare on the middle. What we're going to do today is going to add a smoky flavor and do it naturally and simply on your stovetop. So watch this. We're going to take this beautiful tuna filet. I'm going to open up this as a normal roasting pan, not a fancy smoker. This is something you can pick up at any superstore. We're going to take and put the tuna on the grill that's inside and we're putting it away from where we're going to heat. On the side where we're going to heat, I have in here some hickory chips. I've soaked them in a little bit of water. We're going to lay them on the bottom and place that end directly over the heat. So the grill underneath is right under the chips. The tuna, on the other hand, is all the way to the other side. Because what we're really hoping to accomplish is that this will smoke the tuna without cooking it. And I tell you what, we don't want to overcook it. So how long do you go through this process? Six minutes. We're going to start off with that heat on high to get the smoke going, and then I'm going to turn the heat down so we don't really smoke out the whole studio. All right, but tuna is just a beautiful, beautiful fish if you eat it on the rarer side. So we're going to try and convince you that that's the way to go. Now, along with tuna, you've got to have some wonderful side dishes. And to me, what we're going to start off with here is my all-time favorite. It's a homemade teriyaki glaze. And you're asking, well, why homemade? It takes almost all of the sodium out of the sauce. And anyone who really takes a good look at what you end up with in a store-bought teriyaki sauce, sodium is extremely high. So we're going to start off on a burner in front here. So what we're going to do is take about half of our sesame oil. We're going to save a little bit when we go to sear the tuna. So we've got about a half a teaspoon. And that's sesame oil. You can get that almost any good store. Now that sesame oil is going to go in the pan. We're going to add in fresh chopped garlic. And while that's getting ready and getting hot, we're going to add in, now this is up to you. I'm thinking a pinch of crushed red pepper. All right, and now I'm going to add another pinch. And I'm going to add another pinch. I like it a little spicy. And this, this is kind of a great blending of flavors that you're going to get in this teriyaki. Now, let's put that on the side. Where we're going with this, 
is to add the citrus. Now, I want to take note, I can see some smoke coming out around the edges of the dome. So it's time to turn that down a hair. And we're going about six minutes on this. Six minutes only, that's all it's going to take. And it's going to have a great smoky flavor. Now, here we need a little fresh grated lemon peel, about a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon. And all we do is just kind of take that off, put into the bowl. Now we're going to do the same with our orange. And this is a great orange. These oranges I was able to get at the farmer's market. And you're going to see their blood oranges inside. They have just a great, great amount of juice. All right. We've got the right amount of peel in there right now. So now what we want to do is actually get some of the lemon juice. And listen, this is a lot to try and remember. You can definitely go to mpbonline.org slash fit to eat to get this recipe. I love it though. Now check this out. This is where you really see the benefit. Look at the incredible color of a beautiful blood orange. And this was at a local farmer's market. Look at that juice. Beautiful amount of juice. Let's come back over here and toss our garlic. Get the rest of this juice. And you notice, I'm trying to be careful, I didn't let any seeds get in there. That's absolutely the perfect amount. We add it right into the pan. You're going to notice it quickly comes up to temperature. And now we're going to add in the only salt, which is a low sodium soy sauce. Low sodium soy sauce. So that's the only salt you'll see in this entire recipe. We're going to add in some beautiful organic local Mississippi honey. Honey's got wonderful healing qualities. It's a beautiful way to thicken the sauce. It's a natural way to add sugars. And that's what's important. Remember, we want to keep this as healthy as possible. That dish is very hot. And you can see, at this point, we're going to add in some sesame seeds. Gives it kind of a nutty flavor. And it's part of our dipping sauce in our teriyaki glaze. Unbelievable. Boy, the smell and the aroma of this. We're going to turn the heat down to low. And actually add in, it looks like ketchup. It is. To touch a ketchup. We added in about a teaspoon of ketchup. And what we're going to do with that is let that sauce just kind of meld and sit on its own. And when we do, you're going to see it just has got a great flavor. To pull that to the back, I'm going to start another pan because down the road, I've got a surprise for you. And it's going to be something you may not have ever seen. It's going to be our side dish that we're going to use. And I think you might really enjoy it. So we've got our teriyaki glaze done. Let's take a look. And here's the trick. We're turning the heat off. You're going to have one tuft of smoke come out of this. So when we do this, we want to be sure that you've got it underneath your exhaust fan in your kitchen. All right, so let's go ahead and one quick. That was simple, uh huh? That was really simple. And I'm going to tell you, it added that smoky quality. Oh, I can get the aroma of those hickory chips on that tuna right now. What we're going to do is kind of stage this tuna in the center right now and use it at the point in time when we're ready to sear it at the tail end of our meal. Now, I want to make with you a homemade wasabi aioli. This is something really different. It's got great flavors, and there are probably a lot of you out there who've never seen wasabi as a dry 
amount of powder. Wasabi powder you can buy at most Asian superstores. Any kind of Asian organization is going to have wasabi because it goes hand in hand with any form of sushi. And this tuna is almost a grade of sushi in and of itself. So let's take this now. We're going to take a little bit of our wasabi. We're going to mix it in. And what am I using? It looks like mayonnaise. It isn't. This is not mayonnaise. This is actually strained Greek yogurt. And it's a much healthier, zero fat, zero calories. So this is a nice, healthy way to enjoy it rather than actually using mayonnaise. We're going to stir that wasabi in. And it will, as we place it in, start coloring the sauce green as it hydrates that wasabi powder. We're going to add a little touch, about a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. And remember, nobody's expecting you to remember all these recipes. Go to the website, mpbonline.org slash fit to eat, and you can get all of these recipes. And we're going to add a little bit of a sugar substitute just to add a little touch of sweetness to it. And I tell you what, if that wasn't easy, I don't know what is. That is the perfect consistency that we're looking for in a beautiful, light wasabi aioli. And again, we're going to hold that off on the side, clear our workspace. I said we have a lot going on here, and I meant it. So what do we have to do next? Well, obviously, we're going to sear our tuna. But we're not going to do that just yet, because I've got a surprise, like I said. Take a look at this. I mean, I'll bet that there are people out there who have never seen a whole turnip root with greens attached. There's only one place I know of that you can get this beautiful turnip green, and that's at a farmer's market. And I tell you, the difference of buying it there, it's fresher, no pesticides. You've got something where you've actually got the root attached, and I love turnip greens. Now, a lot of people, when they cook turnip greens, they do them for maybe an hour to two, and they cook them to the point where it's almost like a spinach stew. That's not the way I like to cook it. I'm going to basically take this and show you a whole different way of cooking turnip greens, to me, that gives the freshness of the green a chance to come through, as opposed to cooking it to the point where it might as well be spinach, because you can't really tell. So what do we want to do? We're going to actually sear some of the turnip root itself. We're going to cut off a piece of the turnip root that we're going to actually cook with. And I might get a couple of them. So I'll show you. There's a great little trick in searing these. And they become a wonderful little addition to the overall cooking of the green. Now, I've taken the liberty on the side of bringing off some of the green leaves. And I've got a nice little portion there. So we're going to move this back underneath. Say goodbye to our friend. But again, you know, if you have never seen that whole turnip green, try and find it at your farmer's market. When I'm cooking dinner parties and I pull that out, it's a showstopper. Everybody's like, wow, what is that? That's a real turnip green. I mean, those of you who've grown it, you're probably laughing. But the ones who have not, and I'm telling you, there are many of those, all we're going to do on this right now is slice that turnip green into little slivers. And this is going to become a great part of what we're actually cooking into these turnip greens. And some people might call them a bitter green. Turnip greens are a bitter green. Some of these we're going to cook a little smaller. And as we get these in these nice little shapes, you're going to find it's going to be a great addition to the whole dish. So what else are we going to put in here? I just happen to have them all right here. Some diced onion. A little bit of cooked, dried, and drained bacon so that you've got a nice, healthy bacon. For color, some really pretty diced red bell pepper. And remember, sometimes red bell pepper is seasonal, but when you can get it, 
I love using it because it's got great flavor and it adds a nice color to the dish as well. So where we're going to go from here right now is we're going to add a little bit of oil and on this we're talking no more than a half a teaspoon. So we're keeping the fat content on this extremely low. All right, first thing that has to go in are the turnip roots themselves because they take the longest to cook. So let's throw those in along with our onion. Onion is great when you cook it and it browns because it has a definite aromatic quality and I love it. Love onions. And of course, wouldn't be me unless there was a little bit of garlic. Anybody who has ever been to one of my dinner parties knows it's almost like my calling card. And uh, I just love it. All right, we're going to let that kind of sear. Take a little cracked pepper. Put that cracked pepper right on top. And now we're going to add that cooked, diced, drained bacon because we want to get the flavor of that bacon into all of these other vegetables that are in the pan so that you've got kind of the actual benefit almost as if you cooked with bacon but this way there's virtually no bacon fat so it's a much healthier approach. All right now as that's cooking we're going to kick the heat back up going to add in half of our red roasted because I want to use the rest as a garnish later. Always try and think about presentation when you're cooking. And if you have any question as to how to toss a skillet like that, practice doing it with a piece of toast. We're into a whole other recipe here. So don't forget mpbonline.org slash fit to eat. That's me. You can get all these great recipes. And right now, we're going to have a little bit of fun. We're going to move everything in this pan over to the side so that we're actually searing this turnip grain in the pan and then toss all the beautiful veggies right on top because when I go to toss it over it's going to be a beautiful seared turnip grain as opposed to something that's cooked for hours. I love doing them this way. It has a great, great flavor. Now, let's go ahead and get our teriyaki glaze ready on the side. I love this glaze. I wish you could get the aroma that I'm getting right now. It's incredible. Let's do the same with our wasabi aioli. Nice little dollop on the side. And listen, you can save it for future use. There's quite a bit of it. Let's move it right in back. All right, now you're wondering on the bitter greens, where are we? Watch this. Take them and turn them almost like it was a pancake. It crisps on all sides. It's just incredible this way. And when those come to a little bit more, I just want them to be blanched, we're going to go ahead and pull those. Let's go ahead and get our actual plate ready that we're going to use. Take some of this and do it again, a little bit of housekeeping here. And at this point, we can take those bitter greens, I love them like this, turn them over and you can see it looks like a green pancake, isn't that not incredible? Take everything else, place it over on the side, I like to see the green, always try and leave a little color contrast when you're plating. And then we're going to garnish with some fresh chopped red bell pepper so you got pretty contrast to color there. All right, now you're thinking, what about the tuna? <laughs> We're ready. Hot, hot pan. All right, now the challenge is you want to sear the tuna, but you do not want to overcook it. And then when we get it off, what I'm going to do is actually take it and slice it and kind of fan it across the plate 
so you can see how nice and rare it is. But prior to doing that, we're going to take a little cracked pepper and we're going to coat the side with a little cracked pepper. And you're asking why? Obviously, one, for flavor, but two, it helps it keep from sticking when you go to put it in the pan and you don't want your fish to fall apart in your pan. So now all we've got on the edge of this, we've got the smokiness that we smoked in. We're getting the pan hot, hot, because we want to sear it in a hot pan. Now you had two things here that are going to make smoke, all right? Obviously the smoking process, searing the tuna. And if you remember back to the beginning, I said we're going to save a little bit of our sesame oil. You have to sear tuna to give it that Asian flavor in sesame oil. And we're not going to use much of it. We really are not. So let's go ahead, put in there about a half a teaspoon. All right, and now you ready? Woo -hoo. All right, and you can see it definitely creates a little smoke when that hits the pan. And everybody's probably saying, well, my gosh, how are you going to finish that? in time, this is the amazing part about great seared tuna. It takes about a minute aside. If you cook it more than that, all you're doing is cooking out the flavor. And there's such a big difference, I mentioned earlier, between canned tuna and seared tuna. All the veg, I mean, all the nutritional value is in this raw piece of tuna. And if we cook it too much, what are you doing? But you're actually cooking out all of that flavor. So don't do that. Get in the habit of cooking it less than you would expect. That's the one thing I'm kind of hoping to come away with this. Now, as that pan is smoking, you can see it's seared. We're going to turn it one more time. I'm going to touch just a touch of that oil on top. And it really makes that little bit of smoke, so do be careful when you're in your house having dinner parties. Make sure everybody knows. And again, all of these details you can get at mpbonline.org slash fit to eat. That's our website, and you'll see me, and you'll be able to get all of this great food. Well, believe it or not, guys, here's what we're going to do. We're going to turn the heat off on this. And I like to let it sit for a second, but we want to take our time. And here's the trick. If you're going to have a good presentation on tuna, the one thing you want to do is slice it very, very carefully. So you notice I keep one good sharp knife that I use, and I use it specifically on seafood when I want to slice it. Now let's take a look and make sure where we are on this. Oh yeah, oh yeah, nice and rare, and that's a medium rare. That's exactly what I would call a medium rare, where you've got a nice white crusty edge, and it's still nice and fresh red tuna in the middle. You know, I had a dinner party one night and I was cooking it, and one of my friends walked up and he saw the tuna coming out, and I was serving it medium rare, of course, and he looked at me and he told me, that's not tuna. I was like, what do you mean? He goes, well, tuna's white. And I thought, wow, what a shame. But obviously, the only thing he'd ever tried was canned tuna. So my suggestion to you, what I'm urging you to try is get some tuna and cook it this way on the rare side and try it. It has so much more nutritional value. It's got so much more flavor. And uh, I love it. Let's go ahead and because we still have to get all of this plated. And I'm slicing it, as you can see, carefully so that we don't break these pieces up. And I know you hear me kind of harp on that, but presentation is a huge part of any cuisine, but especially when you're using and cooking in an Asian style of food. All right, now we're going to kind of come down on that corner. And the ends are the trickiest. They're the most cooked. So all we're going to do, I kind of pull that piece off to the side. Now we're going to set that on the bottom, the pieces that we can't really fan out. Then we want to kind of take our time and 
make it look so pretty. And like I said, presentation is everything. So take your time and get that tuna on the plate so that when it goes in front of your guests, they're blown away by, wow, that's one of the most beautiful dishes I've ever seen. And those are the kind of comments I love to hear. It's actually why I love doing what I'm doing, because I think it makes it fun when people really see the value in taking your time and cooking things properly. All right, now we've got this one last little piece we'll set in the center. Okay, now you think that's it. It really isn't. Don't forget, we've got our sauces. So what do I do on this? We've got a little extra piece here. You know what? This is probably cooked a little bit more well done. We're going to keep that on the side for the person who might want it a little more well done. But I want to move this in the center and show you my trick. We take a little bit of the wasabi aioli, and I just put a little dollop at the base of each of the little pieces of tuna. And remember, this is yogurt, not mayonnaise. It's healthy. It's got flavor. I can smell the wasabi. It's awesome. Now, the fun part, the teriyaki glaze. Don't cover all the tuna. You want to be able to see how nice and rare it is. And I tell you what, that truly is a beautiful dish. It's healthy. And remember, you can find all my recipes with the nutritional information on our website, mpbonline.org slash fit to eat. I'm Chef Rob Stinson. Thanks for watching Fit to Eat. Here's another great recipe. Enjoy it. This program was made possible in part by Mississippi Family Farms sustain a long, proud tradition that has been handed down for generations. A safe, dependable source for food, fiber, and timber, Mississippi Family Farmers help feed your family as well as their own. Through best practices and modernization, Mississippi farmers continue to be good stewards of our land and water resources, ensuring a reliable, affordable source of food well into the future. The Farm Families of Mississippi. Support for Fit to Eat comes from Mississippi Seafood Marketing, a division of the Department of Marine Resources. From our waters to your table, wild-caught Gulf Fresh Seafood is fresh, local, and healthy. Information at dmr.ms.gov.